Circular River Park Audenaerde. Um, this comes from a very different perspective, so it's not a data-driven uh, project, it's not research-based either. So it's a planning initiative that was uh, instigated by the province and the local commune in order to develop um, a territory uh, in a different way. And we came with a proposal to use circular approaches to de-block uh, a planning uh, problem they were having. So Audenaerde is a town um, along the Skelt River, which is just uh, quite a bit south of Ghent. Um, and as you, for those who know Flanders, the territory, uh, we have quite a dispersed uh, uh, settlement pattern. And this is an old um, uh, vesting town, so it's an old defense town from the uh, uh, 18th, 19th century. And then, uh, so there is a big park here, which is just around the Skelt uh, River. Um, so this, of course, comes from a very ancient territory, and within this uh, system, which used to be a quite uh, wet landscape where water could go around, we see that urbanization goes around it, but also we saw that there's a development of um, industry, uh, a brick factory, clay excavation, uh, large-scale uh, tissue and textile production, sports facilities, and so on and so on. And now there's a big challenge about the city wanting to develop more urban uh, residential districts because that's what makes money. The industry uh, somehow in between both the regional economical uh, players that are very, very much focusing on water related industrial activities. But there's also a huge landscape, uh, water flood control and mobility challenge uh, in this territory. And so for years they were, they were literally um, uh, fighting and not talking and so the initiative by the province uh, to develop another strategy now the space is quite interesting some parts are very very beautiful this is an old branch of the skelt that's now part of a small scale uh, bio uh, nature hub um, somehow needs uh, an entry gate uh, I'm not sure why but also the stone factory um, is kind of also eating up the landscape, not just by the excavation, but also by using their debris material for building up the landscape and, and completely destroying the water system as it works in terms of irrigation and water uh, captivation. So there is really a, an another care that needs to be taken for this landscape. The city itself is not uh, giving the best examples either. They're building sports facilities that look like prisons. Um, and eventually the industry, the way it's been built into this landscape uh, is quite also uh, a challenge. They're, yes, they're very functional mono-oriented uh, uh, boxes in the landscape. And then there is this idea of a high-end residential uh, park on the river edge in an industrial uh, zoned uh, area. So within this, uh, so there's four major parts. So there's a northern part, which is a former old uh, cardboard fac factory. Um, there's a big part, which is still for uh, clay excavation for the brick factory. There is the main brick factory, an empty industrial terrain. There's also a sewage plant. There is a material uh, s a recycling uh, park. Um, and then there in the south, there is the major sports facility. And in order to, to tackle this uh, big challenge uh, between the different agencies about how, how will we ever decide whether this terrain can develop into either a natural park and keep the industry um, that's there or to go for this residential development, we propose to use um, a circular strategy to start thinking about how different uh, programs could be interrelated and need each other. Um, and so, of course, in a very naive way, we start to talk about some of the food production that we do see in the area, because this is still um, quite good on the economy of uh, agriculture, this terrain, this area. Um, and there's also a very small initiative of um, local food production, aquaponics, uh, so slight advances towards circular ideas about food production. Same thing about water, to trying to understand that it's also about uh, using this uh, landscape as a water system in terms of reuse the water, buffering the water, filtering the water, um, and maybe reintroduce it into the consumption of the city. Try to do a similar question about the, material, uh, the materials of the flows, uh, be being the fact that there is this uh, recycling uh, hub already in the terrain. And eventually also because of the heat production of the brick factory, they are reusing some of the excess heat. Um, but not all of it, and so there's also 
opportunities there. And so this was presented in large uh, stakeholder workshops, um, uh, info markets with local inhabitants. And just to understand the scale of it, so there is the excavation on this site is almost complete in terms of the uh, the, um, the licenses they have, but they do have a whole terrain on the on the north side and the e uh, west side that they can still um, excavate for clay. So there is going to be clay excavation and landscape transformation for the next 20 to 50 years. So it's important to understand that this is an economy that might uh, stay there for a long time. And so our approach is, yes, we need to talk about more space for water. We understand that it's an uh, integrated spatial uh, challenge uh, in, in terms of climate change as well. There was a huge qu uh, question about this uh, alternative mobility and then also helping them to make more circular choices as we framed it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This comes, of course, that in the first, uh, in the old system of this valley, it's quite clear that the city and the water landscape um, is a system that allows for uh, seasonal flooding, that allows for water uh, captivation, buffering, and it's a, it's a quite uh, circular operation, one could say. But then over time, of course, the big problem is this uh, built up uh, of the, the impermeable surfaces, also the rather infrastructural approach to the river, which is um, seen as a, as a water highway. Um, and that our goal is to restore some of these notions and put them in a in a more systemic ID in which you can see the park that's been relate, related, but also understanding that some of these parts can still be uh, part of a development. Very basic stuff, but quite important for these uh, people. And this has, has to do with the, the Flanders territory, or let's say the Belgian territory, being at both, we get the, the, the best of both, so we get very dry summers and very wet winters. So in terms of the climate change, um, this needs to be addressed, and we have to kind of bridge the peak, uh, the gap, and replenish aquifers, and so on and so on. And so in our approach, we have, you know, of course, we need to work on the landscape as a system. We do have to address the water system uh, as a whole. And then there's some improvement in terms of mobility, soft mobility, industrial logistics, and so on and so on. And then we can talk about programming in kind of a circular development approach. So this led to kind of an overview plan um, in which we really try to address all of their uh, challenges and desires. Um, and I'm not going to spend time to explain the spatial quality of it. It's, you can trust us. It's a, it's a good plan. <laughs> um, but in terms of so what, what we were we talking about, for example, uh, to start looking at um, some of the repair of the, uh, the protected uh, uh, landscape, which still has some agricultural function, but more like as meadows and grazelands, but to put like a water system of drainage and ditches uh, back into that. But also understanding that the the drainage of the city sewage system can also be put into uh, a more of a landscape integrated sewage treatment plan that's not just a physical uh, technical facility and that also the excavation landscape can be part of a of a control system of uh, buffering for the before it gets into the river <coughs> and this goes with an approach in which you go from all the scales so there is yes there is mitigation uh, needed in terms of the individual unit and we have to address how to first reuse and kept, capture our water on the individual scale. But of course it goes up into um, uh, permeability, reusing of the water, thinking about uh, other drainage systems in infrastructural design. And so it goes on to a larger scale in which we talk about the, 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 the quality of the park as really being a buffer system and eventually even talking about how it can be um, a water cleaning machine uh, with remediation and a filtering system. Same thing about the landscape. Yes, there is a landscape repair needed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this has to do with the restoring of uh, small landscape elements, but also understanding where the matrix of green and uh, uh, spaces needs to be uh, well kept in order to, 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 to place these systems in there. This also goes into understanding that the landscape of this uh, scaled water uh, territory has its own characteristics. That you, this is a landscape design 101. Um, but also we need to talk about how we frame this park in order to understand that the development doesn't, doesn't keep growing. It's not seen as empty terrain ready for 
the next phase of uh, city expansion, but that actually becomes something that we desire use. Mm -hmm. um, talking about uh, exchangeable business, uh, building rights or transfer to transfer of development rights, I think it's in English, um, and so on and so on. But then also looking at how some of these um, excavations can actually be uh, used to build more or better quality landscape so that the way we excavate if you work on the economic and the, the technical uh, stuff you can um, you know establish better uh, transitions for example um, on the mobility level there is a whole transition about understanding that um, if we ever want to go to a better mobility behavior we do need to uh, design our cities less as uh, uh, tr uh, traffic systems for highways. And so there is this major connection that goes through some of these towns that we're, we're talking about different strategies and phasing of how ambitious you could be. And that allows us also for a transition of the mobility system on the, um, on the physical scale, reusing some of the existing infrastructure, but for different modes. So it's not always redesigning everything, it's also reusing existing infrastructure. And this also goes into a, a system of um, going through all the scales again, looking at very small scale individual interventions of how we introduce um, the user and the behavior on the smaller scale, looking at how to rethink the infrastructure that they do have and what we can organize on the municipal level, such as uh, other kind of car sharing uh, examples. And eventually also to see this much more as a combination of recreational spaces, looking at the programming of such an element and to really develop this uh, idea of bicycle culture in this territory, because this is also where uh, the Tour de Flandre, one of our major uh, bicycle events, uh, uh, arrives. And so that's a very important part of their uh, culture. But what is more important, I think, um, is that so we help them to start building up an idea about how can you look at circular development and circular programming to create dependencies between very different actors. Um, so the first thing we did is also to map all of the initiatives in this territory that we are know that they are known to us to look at people that are already doing this. Some of them are on food production, uh, some of them are on reusing of materials. Um, and so these are uh, like quite a lot of actors in this territory, so there's um, already that happening. <coughs> and we understood that from these workshops and the, the in inventory made, that a big part has to do with um, the rethinking of the flows of energy and heat. Another one has to do with the look at material and how the production uh, of diff different uh, actors can be seen as a material flow uh, improvement. And then eventually there's also this idea of process and knowledge sharing, um, which you can also put into a more uh, uh, well, featured locations. Um, and then in all of these sections, we were looking at which are the actors that you can uh, connect. How can you um, connect certain flows of uh, materials? And then also how uh, energy and uh, heat demands can be connected. Maybe we can talk a little bit more in detail here. So, uh, yeah, maybe this. Um, so, for example, we know that there is a new water purification uh, station to be built in which we can then start talk about uh, um, Rio Termi, uh, sewage heat uh, recuperation. There is some of the, the second degree uh, heat access from the stone factory. Um, so if we took, took all of that, we combine it with, for example, the municipal uh, swimming facilities, some of the outdoor facilities, some of the new developments, you could start setting up a small-scale um, heat exchange network based on um, the desire for certain uh, uh, people to, 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 to look at uh, an improvement. This is not calculated, so it's really the beginning of a potential business case, but it is a way of understanding that if you are talking about new economies to come, maybe the reason to accept them is not because there is a good water access, but that the reason is that they can be play a role in how to set up a business case that's uh, viable for a heat and uh, um, energy exchange. Same thing we tried to do to look at um, uh, some of the, let's say, biomass flows. There is an old, uh, well, there's an existing brewery. It's a kind of a microbrewery of Leafman's beers. 
Um, and they already have um, uh, a connection with a bakery that uses the debris of the brewing processes for uh, bread production. And actually the inverse also is that some of the bread um, is actually also used in, uh, in, the, in the growing procedures. Um, some of it also used for breeding uh, mushrooms, uh, uh, growing mushrooms in, uh, in some of the basements. So if you, if you take this and actually also locate it on the site in a, in a more clear way, this becomes really something that's produced within the park and that it's something to really share also as, a, as, a, um, well, as something that you can market even. And then this is linked to an initiative they do have of a social restaurant in the territory. And that then could be linked to the, the, the horeca and the catering that they do have on all the sports facilities. There's about seven sport organizations in this sport park. They all have their own cafeteria, their own bar, and their own catering service. So trying to link um, uh, what is produced in the park to what is being consumed. There's a small um, uh, uh, co-producing of uh, food by the local community on one of the heritage sites. And so we, we go and then start talking about how this can be upscaled also in terms of landscape maintenance uh, by some of the organizations. <coughs> and then we put the next hypothesis is about this flow of materials where the container park and the, the, the reselling of uh, uh, the Kringwinkel um, they have in the city, which is slightly further away. There's also an initiative of repair cafe. And so we're trying to look at how this can be more seen as a flow that's continuous and uh, this this is quite good because it is actually something that through this participatory process of the different design sessions the info markets the communication we've been having this is being picked up by the local communes and of course we have this understanding that you could take it much further if you want to talk about the building construction material library um Audenaarde is quite a good place for that because it is as a, a regional city de dealing with a large-scale uh, hinterland. And so, <coughs> again, uh, we try to talk about, yes, there is questions about the exchange of energy, materials, and food production, um, to look at how some of the reuse of the materials is there, to understand that there's also quite an, a lot of knowledge and processes of, of small communities um, that we need to grant and cater for. So this ha also has to do with uh, shared infrastructure. I think the example in Charlotte uh, that we just saw had uh, this idea that there's also physical spaces needed to support such uh, uh, an exchange of knowledge is quite important. Um, <coughs> and then we also developed, uh, this is more the spatial uh, quality of certain things and so how some of the excavation landscape can then also start dealing with some of the more important uh, soft um, uh, infrastructures, um, how the brewery can be also seen as a, as a, as a hub for many of these uh, approaches, being both uh, an event location, being a small scale production, but also being at the, 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 the starting point for some of these circular approaches. And then also the former sluice complex, where there is a development question by the, the, the harbor, the Vlaamse Waterweg. Um, which we try to reduce and explain that this is not uh, the location to do so. Um, and so this was all put together into a large scale uh, master plan. Well, it's maybe more of a framework. It's not yet the master plan. Um, this was done in uh, 2018. Over the last year, they're in the process of making um, the spatial zoning plan. This is a very um, delicate moment because as soon as it goes back to the legislative part, we're potentially are losing the qualities of understanding the circular need of establishing relationship between some of the players. Um, there is sub uh, uh, studies for all of these white spots. Um, they're just not allowed to be shown yet, so I'm so sorry for that. And what we also spoke about is that we do need to talk about certain concrete ideas and how to, so first of all, uh, we need to understand that if we develop in this area, there's always this, this uh, desire for establishing uh, added value. So if the program that we want doesn't create a circle added value, then it's not the one we want. Second, we need to understand that the brick factory and excavation should much more be addressed as a landscape builder rather than uh, the right to excavate. So there's another culture that needs to be established there. 
yes, there is an idea of understanding um, that we need a, a shared visual identity also for this park because it's built by so many different people. Um, that the heritage site that they do have for which there's a difficulty of reprogramming it and being relevant in this territory by the province, that maybe understanding that the circular approach can be some of their uh, agendas. There is a mobility question that needs to be addressed from freight towards uh, bicycle culture. And that in order to establish a circular culture, because that's what we want and what we need, um, we need to start talking about learning trajectories and who is taking charge and that's where different kind of organizations come in. There was an idea of developing more of a celebration, an event style. Belgium is quite uh, famous for its festivals. So try to maybe use also this uh, park as it is, as found as a temporary use. Uh, and then there are some small uh, interventions um, that deal much more about the infrastructure and the landscape. So these are very specific things we proposed that we could do already while waiting for these long planning processes to take place. Voila, that's uh, where we are. Thank you.